we are going to go ahead and go over installation of SCOV4 for DRS. Um, uh, first, you're going to grab the files from your file explorer. You're going to grab them and you're going to click and drag them into Studio. And then they'll appear. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and come over here. And so what I dragged in was DRS code and the folder, right? Um, first thing we're going to do is put the DRS code into server storage. That's all you need to do with that. Then we're going to go to our workspace folder. We're going to open it up. There's a readme script there if you want to read it. Um, it gives credits to all the people who worked on this, so it is appreciated if you know who those people are. Or just take a look. You know, you don't have to. We're going to delete this. We're going to delete that. Now we have different folders here. Um, if you don't want to customize your tills or anything, you can take these integrations and you can delete them. That is fine. That is A-OK. -okay. For my purposes, I'm just going to leave them in the workspace. We're going to move them over there, none to be done here. Now, everything else. So, we have different folders here, right? We're going to put the contents of those folders into what those are named. So, if this is server storage, I'm going to take the contents of that folder and I'm going to put those into server storage. Same thing applies to everything else, starter pack or server storage. For me, since I am testing, I'm putting these into starter pack. Then starter player scripts. All right, that's in starter player and starter player scripts. And workspace. Great, we can delete that folder. So now we've got everything split up. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and go to our settings. We've got master config. So debit card name. Um, this is the name of the debit card um, that you are using to process payments. Um, so the one that we give you is just debit card. That's it. Debug, unless you are contacting support for an issue, this should be set to false. UI theme. Um, we go more into in-depth on how to apply a UI theme um, in a different section. For now, we're just going to skip over that. General, if you want um, purchased items to be rescannable, so say someone buys an item on the self-checkout, um, do you want that to be scannable still at a different checkout? Um, if you do, set it to true. If you don't, set it to false. This is the voices, so if you want to change how the voices sound for each um, self-checkout, you can do that. Um, data store, I would highly recommend keeping this on, even if it's just for a short time. Otherwise, your suspended transactions won't reappear. Um, you won't be able to have suspended transactions because it needs a way to check that transaction history, right? Um, so I would recommend leaving this true. Otherwise, if you don't want it, you can set it to false. Then cash handling. So this is saying, do you want the option, do you want to require there to be cash in the system for people to handle cash, right? Um, if so, then you set that to true and they can take the cash out. They can put the cash in um, and meet float on boot. So the float is how much you have in there um, already. So if I have $200 float in the um, till, then someone can go up there and they can get a refund in cash right um, and uh, it will give them that refund right um, or a better example if someone if there's not enough cash in there if there's no float in there at all and someone tries to make a transaction and they put in a 20 20 dollar bill well it doesn't have any cash in there so it can't give them a 10 a 5 and four ones back right um, because it doesn't have that cash so that's kind of how the float works. It has cash in there already to act as like change for the transaction. Um, so I'd recommend leaving that on. Otherwise, you can have your staff put that into the machine at startup, um, which really adds to the realism. I'm pretty excited for that. Webhooks. So you can change your webhooks for your system. If you want them on, set that to true. You can set the color um, and your URL. You may need to use a proxy for your webhook. Um, we do not assist with that. This is the decal on the different um, bills that are changed that comes out of the machine. Um, so set that as you please. Integration. So if you want specific integrations, just find them and set them to true. And reports. Um, we're not going to go into that too much here. And pretty self explained for that one. Now. Account config. So this is your user account. So people who can sign into the staff menu. Um, say I have a cashier. They have everything true, but I don't want them to be able to close the lane. I'm going to copy everything. So if I follow this line, this is 
aligned with the one, right? So I'm going to follow that line all the way down to this bracket, and I'm going to copy everything in between. Copy, and we're going to go under that bracket, and we're going to paste. Now I need to make sure I change the number, because that's the ID number, right? So we're going to change that to two, and this is the manager, okay? So I don't want the cashier to be able to close the lane. We're going to set that to false, but I do want them, or I'm sorry, I do want the manager to be able to close the lane, so that's going to stay true, okay? And we're going to set the password to 2345. Simple. Now they can log in with ID number 2, password 2345. And that's it. Okay, that's account config. That's really easy. Receipts config. Unless you know how to script, I wouldn't recommend messing with this. Um, basically, the way this works, though, is like whenever a receipt is created, it's only calling this function, and it is making that receipt. Um, again, if you don't know how to script, I would recommend leaving that alone. Self-checkout config. So these are the defaults right here for every self-checkout, right? So if something is set here, true, but if you go to the lane specifically, so if I go to this self-checkout and I set it to false, then it's going to use that one. But by default, it will use this one, okay? Um, now, this is saying if you want it to boot. Yes? Great, set it to true. No? Set it to false. Do you want it to be card only or cash only or both? What currency do you want? Do you want the card reader to be tap, prompt, or both? Um, do you want cash on the machine by default? Do you want, when the when an item is scanned, do you want it to hold the item until the user has paid? So it'll take it from their inventory, and they can't use it until they pay. Um, do you want random weight checks to fail? And then the transaction prefix. So when you pull up a report, um, or like a reprint receipt, um, it'll show the transaction prefix to every transaction. Um, and do you want require approval for item removal? Then we have power whitelist. So this is your user ID and the username. So this is who can control the power button on the back of the machine. And then you have assistance notifications. So like if you want to use Vocovo um, for anybody, then you can do that. Or we allow you to use third party um, and you'll have to kind of check with their system. That's kind of that. I know it's a lot. We're done. That's all the configuration. Now, we're going to go straight to the um, tills themselves. We're going to do lane configuration. Every lane must have a unique lane ID. Okay, so it cannot all be one. It has to be different. And if it is the same, then you will get a blue screen of death. I'm so sorry. Jump scare. I know. Um, it'll say invalid lane number, and it will not work. Womp womp. So, change that. Um, make sure you change the lane ID. Everything else you don't need to change unless you wish to. That is it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support. There's more covered in this video later on. And that is all for installation. Hello. Right now we're going to cover how to apply a UI theme to your system for SCO v4. So, in your UI themes, you can have different types. Um, for the Armodia ones, if they are tagged dash Armodia, then they will apply to the Armodia tills. We're going to cover that soon. Um, so let's say I want a, a new theme. We're going to say this is um, just special. Okay. So I have my new theme, right? To apply it, um, I need a special. And then I need a special Armodia. So this is whatever you want to show on the Armodia tails, either just a rescaled one or a diff completely different UI um, or et cetera, right? Um, and then we'll need a tall. So that's what's going to show on these ones. So we're going to put special tall. So now to actually apply that, we're going to go to our master config um, and we're going to go to UI theme. I don't want to use original anymore. I want to use special. We're not going to put any dash, just special. And then it is automatically going to take the special and it's going to apply it to the regular ones. Then it's going to take the special Armodia and it's going to apply it to your Armodia ones. Then it's going to take the special tall and it's going to apply it to the tall one. That is it, right? Um, if you have a custom till that you want to size for, then you need to go in there and you need to tag it. Um, DRS dash um, whatever, and it will work. Okay? That is all.
we're going to go over how to add an integration into your system. So let's say you have a self-checkout, but you don't want this card reader on it. I'm going to take that card reader and I'm just going to delete it. And I want a different card reader. What card reader do I want? I want this one. This one's nice and old. I like that one. Has Wabi Sabi. We're going to bring that over here. We're going to bring it down or actually here. We're going to put it over here and we're going to just put it on the bagging area because that's what good self checkouts look like. We're going to tilt it and we're going to say, this is my integration. All I have to do to put it into effect is put it in the integrations folder. That's it. Now it works. That's only for the ones that are over there. If you want to make your own integration, you can refer to the API guide on the Lumen Core forums and you can update this API. In here, there's already a boot process. So if you want a different boot process for the card reader, you can edit that. Um, otherwise, you can make your own card reader functions when it takes payment or whatnot. Um, you'll have to refer to the API for that. Um, uh, so on that note, that's how you do an integration. Those will automatically be set up when you put them into the integrations folder and there's nothing else you have to do. We're going to go over how to add and make your own products. So if I have a provided cereal box product, okay, every product is going to have a tag. So in the properties, you're going to go to tags on the bottom and you're going to see DRS product. That is the tag it needs to have. Then in there, you're going to find a DRS dash product info. This is all your product info for the entire product. Okay. Um, so standard or gift card EAN, which must be unique. Um, and then that information there, all of it has descriptions, pretty easy. Um, now let's say I'm going to go to the toolbox and I'm going to find a random thing that I want as a product. I'm going to say a, a phone. It needs to be a tool. The product has to be a tool, by the way. So phone tool, right? We have our phone. And I want this to be a product. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to tags. I'm going to say DRS product. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right there. Great. Now it is a standard product. The EN, I have to change it because it has to be unique. I'm going to say it's 47267. Um, product name. This is a Rosung um, Galaxy R21. Display name, Rosung Galaxy. Or actually, we'll do a Galaxy R21. Category, we're going to say this is phones. Okay. Um, so the category is what's updating in the hotkeys for this system. So when you tap the search bar, it's automatically going to make a new category for for phones in the, in the search bar. Um, image ID, what do I want to show when I update the category in the search menu? You can leave it empty if you wish. Um, then the price of the item. So I'm going to say this is $499. I'm going to say it, if you have a club card, you betcha you get a $399 phone. Um, I don't want discounts to apply to this. Um, no way checks required. And you can only buy one. I don't want it to require approval. Great. That's your product.